Hey guys, what is up? And I welcome each and every one of you to a new League of Legends video. Today, we're going to be going over the biggest changes coming to patch 9.9 .9 as the patch is about to hit in just a couple of days. So if you end up enjoying this video, then don't forget to hit that like button. But this video is going to be made and edited by Pro Guides. It's a website that helps to improve your overall League of Legends game plan and knowledge. They are now completely free, so definitely check out the link down below. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about in this video is actually not a change coming in the next patch, well, unless you're talking about PBE, but it is going to be some Yumi gameplay. As I'm sure you guys know, Yumi did get leaked all over the internet not too long ago, and because of that, well, I mean, things have been surfacing up. And this also includes this Chinese video you are watching at the moment, where, I mean, personally, I can't understand what they're saying, but it is of Yumi gameplay. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like a bunch of Chinese, maybe content creators or something, went to the ride headquarters in China or wherever they went, and then they made some gameplay around Yumi. So this is technically the first actual gameplay video of Yumi we have on YouTube that isn't like a true Trailer. Now, Riot has already revealed her abilities. I mean, they are literally in the client, so I'm assuming you guys know what her abilities are by now. But I thought, you know what? We'll share with you guys a little bit of some Yumi gameplay over here since it is technically the first one. But since it's in Chinese, I'm sure a lot of us don't understand what's happening. And on top of that, tomorrow, on Tuesday, I will have some gameplay of myself playing Yumi on the PBE server, so stay tuned for that. Moving along, I'm assuming for this patch as well, we're going to be getting some visual effects updates for Ash, Blitzcrank, Caitlyn, Jax, plus a sound effects update for Renekton. Now, this is not actually a rework. Don't forget, all their abilities are essentially the exact same. The only difference is the fact that they look a lot cleaner now. The abilities look much more updated to today's standards. So let me know down in the comment section below, what do you think of these visual effects updates and the sound effects for Renekton? And which of them do you think is the best one or I guess the cleanest looking one? Following this, another change that should be hitting next patch, if not next patch, and definitely the one after, is going to be a jungle change to where now Scuttlecrab is actually going to be spawning about a minute and a half or so later than it currently does. This is to prevent early skirmishes that essentially almost decide the game at the very moment. It's also to prevent mid laners and junglers from always essentially having to coordinate a level two slash level three power plays and whatnot to just play around the scuttle crab. I mean, it's pretty annoying for everyone involved, especially mid laners in my opinion, because you're pretty much forced to play mid laners that are strong level two or level three, just so you can contest scuttle crab, which is not really ideal. So that being said, scuttle crab is going to be changed to spawning later. So not only does this help mid lane out, so you don't have to pick champions that can contest it, but this also means that the jungle path is is going to severely change because usually at the moment most junglers they path accordingly to the first scuttle crab spawn right since at the beginning there are two of them well now that's not a thing anymore so jungle path is going to be changing a lot the jungle meta could potentially change a lot as well and this is going to be a very big change and the final very quick thing is the fact that there's a bunch of new MSI accents coming over to Summoner's Rift and a bunch of new kind of icons and even the loot coming out next patch as well because MSI does begin. But now let's talk about the first actual change coming over to the champions being Aatrox and he is getting a mini rework. Now I did make a gameplay of this mini reworked Aatrox on my channel so definitely check it out if you haven't. But very quickly, the changes are as follows. First of all, his HP per five has been lowered. His passive no longer has the Grievous Wounds effect, like the more powerful version of it, but now it heals Aatrox for the bonus damage dealt from his passive, which is quite good. But with that being said, the bonus damage has been lowered, but the cooldown has also been lowered, so it's much more spammable in lane, which I think is actually a good trade-off. The maximum bonus damage his passive can do to monsters has been significantly lowered to, of course, nerf jungle Aatrox, and the attack frame has been adjusted to more closely match other basic attacks. Moving on to his Q ability, you can see that the cooldown start time has actually changed overall. The damage has been increased on this ability by 10 by rank 5, and the cooldown has also been lowered across the board, especially by the time it gets to rank 5. Now don't get confused because again, they did change the cooldown start time, so it does start later, even though the cooldown overall is lower. So at the end of the day, it's not that much lower. His W got some small changes as well, where the slow has been changed to now being 25% flat, and the cooldown has also been increased. His E no longer gives you attack damage for 1.5 seconds, and the passive healing source has been changed from physical damage to now being non-periodic champion damage of any type. In other words, what that means is champion damage that is not over time. And probably the biggest change of them all is towards his ultimate where essentially now you don't get an instant revive you have to get a takedown now to get the revive actually activated right but this also means that when you get a takedown well he gets a five second extended duration on his ultimate's duration which is insane it refreshes the movement speed and it also of course procs the revive and also i believe it resets the cooldown on his q he also revive heals for 30 percent of his max hp now rather than starting at 10 and going up to 50 percent and he no longer fears allied minions so let me know what you think about this change down below 
Moving along, let's talk about some nerfs coming over to Akali where her W is getting a nerf because this ability is way too overpowered at the moment. The extended duration has been lowered on this ability from starting at 8 and up to 10 to now starting at 7 and up to 9, so by 1 second, and the cooldown has also been increased by 4 seconds rank 1. A pretty fair nerf, but I honestly don't think it's that big of a nerf either. Moving along, we have that mini Blitzcrank rework as well coming out, where we have his mana barrier, the passive, the shield strength has been changed from 50% current mana to 30% of maximum mana, which gives him more opportunities to give him bigger shields. And his ultimate has a new passive effect that states, Lightning charges up Blitzcrank's attacks, dealing up to 150 base damage plus 30% AP as magical damage, which stacks two times. So in other words, he no longer has the random lightning strikes, instead now it's a lot more more obvious as to which target is going to get the burst. Moving along, some quick buffs coming over to Darius, where the Q ability now deals more damage and also it heals more HP, or at least missing HP at every single rank, which is actually kind of insane because they did the same thing to Renekton, and now Renekton heals like there's no tomorrow. Following this, we have some quick changes coming over to Echo, where you can see his base AD has been increased by 3, which actually isn't bad. I mean, it helps the last hit, it helps his E ability for harass as well, and his E ability as well, phase dive, the mana cost has been lowered as you rank it up, so 20 less by rank 5. Next up, we have some nerfs to Hecarim, arguably the most overpowered champion in League of Legends. While now his Q ability is just simply doing less damage to champions, and his E ability has been also lowered in the overall damage that it deals. Is this enough to bring him down to the level he should be at? Well, I'm not sure, but I'm hoping that it is. Next up, we have some nerfs coming over to Jarvan, the fourth, where his base HP, mana, and mana regeneration have all been lowered, and his W now gives him less shield, and actually a decent amount less shield overall, so a pretty big nerf to his W, and on top of that, his E ability's cooldown has been increased by a full second. So this will definitely start hurting Jarvan when he goes into fights and tries to rely on his W to be tanky, because no longer will it be be anywhere near as tanky. But speaking of champions that gain tankiness for just pressing one button, Kennen no longer will receive armor and magic resistance whenever he uses his E ability, which is also a pretty big nerf because he heavily relies on that. And I can't tell how many times Kennen has survived literally because of the resistances he gets from pressing E. But it's not all bad news because now at least his ultimate gives him armor and magic resistance whenever he activates it. Now, not as good as his E ability, I'll tell you that right now because obviously number one, you can't use it as often, and number two, whenever you're well, there's a good chance that person is stunned anyway, so that extra resistances isn't all that useful regardless. Next up, we have a quick change coming over to Lissandra, where her W's damage has been increased and the AP ratio has also been increased by 20% since she did get some big nerfs a couple of patches ago. We also have some buffs coming over to Maokai, where his Q ability's damage has been increased as well across the board. Now again, the tank meta is slowly coming back, so this is going to definitely start swinging it in that favor. We also have a nerf coming over to Morgana's Black Shield where the shield strength has been lowered and the cooldown has been increased on her E ability because, I mean, let's be honest, Black Shield is easily one of the best abilities in League of Legends, period. Next up, we also have some changes coming over to Rakan, where you can see here his base stats have been changed and increased or lowered based on which one you're talking about, but the biggest changes are to his W and his ultimate. The speed on his W has increased by a fair amount actually, it's going to be significantly faster now. And his ultimate also got changes where now Rakan has a 0.5 second cast time, he can still move, where he can no longer use his W or his flash. So even though his W is faster, it's nowhere near as easy now to combine it with his speed with his ultimate since there is that forced delay. Next up, we also have some changes in nerfs coming over to arguably the second most overpowered champion in League of Legends, Rek'Sai. The base AD on this champion and the AD per level have both been lowered, her Q ability burrowed, which is Prey Seeker, the cooldown has been increased, and her E ability's damage has also been lowered by only 5, which I honestly don't think will matter whatsoever. Next up, we also have some quick buffs coming over to Shen, where his attack speed per level has been increased and his E ability's bonus health as damage has also been increased by 3%. Following this, we have some fairly large changes coming over to to Soraka. The biggest one is towards her Q ability where the cooldown has been increased overall except when you get it to rank 5 in which it's actually one second shorter, but the TLDR of all these changes which look very confusing is the fact that the damage overall on the Q has actually been lowered, but the healing overall has been just increased. She also moves a little bit faster now whenever she's running to a target that she needs to heal. Moving along, her E ability's cooldown has been lowered, the mana cost has been increased, and the damage has also been lowered. Overall, some pretty good changes because Soraka's damage in lane is just way too damn high. Next up, some quick buffs coming over to Silas's W where the base damage has just simply been increased by 10 rank 1 and by 30 by rank 5. 
We also have some changes coming over to Tom Kench where the TLDR is, well, his support capabilities are just overall weaker now, but his top lane tank potential is overall stronger. His Q ability got buffed essentially across the board. His W will now slow him whenever he's consuming an ally as well as a champion, so it's a lot less easy to, I guess, save an ally with a W. The damage that the W does to champions has also been changed now to where it does base damage plus HP percent damage rather than just percent damage. And I think the reason they did this is because with tanks slowly coming back into the meta, if they remained it at only percent, it will be way too overpowered. But on the flip side, it's also just simply better against squishier champions. This E ability now just simply converts more grey health into HP and it costs no more mana, and the range on his ultimate has been significantly lowered rank 1, the same at rank 2, but significantly increased by rank 3. Also very quickly, the Teemo rework that we've talked about way too many damn times has been once again reverted off of the PBE server, Riot is not ready yet to release it, so we'll probably see it in the next patch. And last but not least for champions, we have a quick buff for Volibear where his W's bonus attack speed per stack has just been simply increased. Next up to some items and runes, Mana Mutant has had its AD increased by 10, which is actually kind of surprising, I'll be completely honest with you. Ezreal is already pretty OP, this will make Ezreal technically even better. Also we have the Cheap Shard rune buff where the bonus true damage has just been simply increased. On top of this, Ghost Poro will also give you a stack, up to 10 stacks of course, when your Ghost Poro spots an enemy rather than just whenever a Ghost Poro spawned. Ultimate Hunter is getting some buffs where the CDR per stack has been increased by 8%, which I think is actually quite good. Relentless Hunter is also being buffed to just giving you more movement speed. Celerity is also getting some changes to where now all movement speed bonuses are 7% more effective on you and you have an additional 1% movement speed, so pretty good buff to someone like Hecarim. Scorch just simply does a little bit more damage though I still think it's kind of a so-so keystone, but the biggest thing is of course going to be Aftershock, the keystone that everyone hates. It is now nerfed to where essentially if you're a tank, it's actually a little bit stronger to be completely honest with you, but if you're anything but a tank, it is significantly weaker. Bone Plating has also received a nerf to just simply reducing less damage, and Conditioning has had a little bit of a buff to where now it gives you a little bit more armor and MR, and last but not least, Magical Footwear. The free boots time has been increased from 10 minutes to 12 minutes, but the takedown timer reduction has been slightly increased, so if you get enough kills or takedowns, it'll actually be the same if not less. And of course, we also have the new skin coming out being Conqueror Alistair. But either way, guys, that's about it for this video. There you have it, a bunch of new changes coming over to this patch. It's a fairly big one as well. On top of that, we also have some first look at gameplay at a Yumi from the Chinese video. Let me know what you think about this video, guys. Let me know what you think about the changes. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to hit that like button. But thank you all so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you for the next video. Peace.